Hello there, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome back to the Talos Principle walkthrough. And today, well, unfortunately, we are not currently able to complete World A. There is one thing that I need to show off. This is a doorway. It's actually a doorway you can walk through, even though it has a wall right in front of you that disappears once you walk right through it. And there's a teleporter here. And once you take this teleporter and get past the loading screen, you find a secret little world. And this world's really cool, because this is all one big easter egg, and you get to see a bunch of blockheads. A bunch of people with computers as heads. This is the, um, secret developer room. And there are, like, a whole bunch of little things that you can look at right here. I don't want to stay here for too long, because there are a bunch of other things I need to show off, which are just part of the main game, but this area is just all one big secret. And if you look somewhere, there he is. You can find the music composer of this game. It's... I, um... At the risk of sounding not like an idiot, I'm going to avoid trying to pronounce his name, but I think I know how it's pronounced. I just don't want to make an attempt at it right now because... Well, it's not the way it looks like because it is not an English name. Yes. Over here is actually kind of interesting, because these are a bunch of members of the Seriously forums, and I'll just take a quick look at all of these for you to read. There's even one that has a little plunger right next to it called this Trigger, and that's pretty cool. Apart from that, this area also has really nice music, which we will be hearing in other places notably, but this is kind of a good place where you get the chance to listen to it. It's one of my favorite tracks in the entire game too, because it's just so peaceful the piano in the background and everything, and you probably can't hear it because I'm just talking over it right now, but I can tell you right now, you should go listen to the soundtrack of this game. The composer actually does have a YouTube channel, and he uploaded all the tracks, and there is only one problem with that, is that I think all the tracks he uploaded has like the traditional Elohim voice in a bunch of them. But there is, like, an alternate soundtrack which you can also listen to that somebody else uploaded, and it doesn't have any of the Elohim dialogue inside, which gives you a chance to just listen to the music by itself, and it is just one of... It's a really good soundtrack. I don't want to say one of the best, because I'm really praising this game a lot, and there are surely a few flaws to be had here or there, just to be perfectly fair with all of this. Also, this camera right here. That's pretty cute. And there's some guys that are working at this computer terminal, which we don't have access to, but you can actually see them typing. Sort of. It's pretty neat. It looks a little more impressive if you're standing back here, I'll be perfectly honest, but uh, you know how it is. They're probably just showing off how they developed this game. And there's a bunch of robots here. There's a recording. This guy called Samsur, and a guy called The Shepherd. Some of these people have actually been writing down QR codes in the game, and that's pretty neat. And there's Admir. Admir is a guy who works at Crow Team. I recognize that game. I recognize the name, of course, because one, Crow Team, and two, he was a Crow Team head in, um, I think it was like the first game. Yeah, probably the first serious sub game. But yeah, I, I like this little developer island. It does a lot of cute little things which you can look at, and I'm just going to try and show off any areas which I did not visit because, well, for one thing, there's this really, really tiny robot over here called Nathan Mini-Me. He is absolutely adorable. He's gonna run around with this miniature box. Hexahedron. Sorry. He did it! And that guy cheered him on. That's pretty neat. I think that's actually all I really need to show about this place. But it's, it's a neat little island that you can check out, and <laughs> it's kind of a bit more one of the obvious secrets because you know, you've got that one doorway with the miscolored wall, and usually in most serious sound games when you see something like this, the solution is to just like shoot it with a gun or a rocket launcher and then it will blow up, revealing a secret inside or something. And <laughs> yeah, th there's no exception here, except this time you just have to run into it and you'll be fine, you'll, you'll get it, I guess. Anyway, here's a Tetramina puzzle. You solve it by doing this. I'm glad I had that memorized, because otherwise, we would probably be there for a while. Button. Congratulations, you won the game. Just a sec, let me find that end movie. I know it's around here somewhere. Nope. No. That's not it. Where the hell is that video file? Oh, look here. 
Somebody made a serious Sam parody back to Egypt. I'm gonna go, uh, review this. You keep playing. There's more puzzles. I was just joking around about the game being over. I was just getting bored of watching you and I was gonna cut you off. Carry on. If it gets too hard, you can always come back to these easier puzzles. I'll be up in the tower with some popcorn. Don't disturb me. I'm pretty sure the parody he's talking about is a map for one of the Series 7 games. It's like a custom map someone made, but I cannot recall which game it's for. It sounds really, really familiar, though. Uh, maybe I'll take a look at it someday. Maybe not. I don't know. I can't really live up to my word that often. This is the tower. This is like one of the most impressive structures in the entire game. Like, just look at that. Eventually, that tower is going to come into play, because, well, there are a bunch of QR codes in front of it which you can read. This is just, this is such a neat area. This is, of course, the main central hub where you can access all different worlds. You've got World A over there, World B over there, and World C over there. Now, this video is going to be slightly shorter because I'm not really going to be doing any puzzles. I'm mainly just going to be unlocking World B, and we can't actually access World C just yet. But there's still a bunch of things here that are worth showing off, which will come into play eventually. Also, a couple of hidden terminals around here, too. And there are even a couple of easter eggs as well. Actually, there's only one easter egg, if I recall correctly. There's a connector over here that's hidden by a bunch of pallets. And we need that connector for this area, which has a star in the back, and yeah. I'm just gonna break the ice right now by saying we will not be getting the secret star until way later on in the game. So, I hate to disappoint you and keep that in the back of your mind, but just a fair warning, we're not gonna be there for a very, 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 very extremely lengthy amount of time. But as long as we are out here running about on the ice, there is one hidden QR code down below which laments of the fact that he cannot seem to reach those islands out in the distance. He or she, it's just version 17 something something, I don't know if it's a male or a female robot. Can robots have genders? I think we've invented robots that have genders at one point or another, but at the same time, it really doesn't seem necessary, but I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just hindering progress of technology! Uh, I'm being sexist against robots which could have genders, and I, I'm sorry. I should not be that way. I should not be that sexist bastard who's against robots having genders. Anyway, that was a hidden terminal. On my first playthrough, I never discovered that one was hiding back there for a long time. It's not really that obvious, and I don't think you can actually hear it beeping at you through this building over here, which is World C. We still need two more sigils to access this world, but we're gonna go ahead and like check out these couple of files that are hidden inside this hard drive, which talks about the Kingdom of Heaven and also the Kingdom of Hell, and stuff like that. Very deep stuff. Uh, so you can actually tell... Oh, there's a bunch of QR codes here. You can actually tell which area, like which world per se, has which different theme. So you've got World A, which was based around Rome. You have World C over here, which has some angel statues on it. And I think it's like called the Land of Faith. And you have World B, which is... Egypt! <laughs> this... It wasn't really a surprise, honestly. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up this terminal and get more files, such as Oxyrindicus, uh, at the Book of Osiris Wikipedia, which has a bunch of information. I'm actually wondering if it's just like that on the original Wikipedia page, unless somebody changed it, in which case, well, that would be bothersome because people can do that on Wikipedia. A anyone can edit pages. So, of course, it's bound to be really accurate information. We're going back to this area because there is one thing that's worth showing off. There's another radio over there, and this one's a little bit more difficult to access than the first one we found in one of the f worlds a bit ago. And it's a parkour puzzle. I might fall off. <laughs> I've actually, I'm kind of surprised I managed to get this far without falling off at first, but 
it's probably bound to happen as soon as I like try shimmying around this area because well there's a bit of precise movement involved and it can be a little bit perilous trying to make your way around but the result is um well it's sort of rewarding I guess I can't really say it's the most rewarding thing in the world to get this particular Easter egg but it's there if you want to listen to it because there's another radio and the radio usually contains helpful dialogue such as this what's happening Sam Exactly. Even the, even Quinn doesn't know what's happening right now, so... Yeah, good information. That's, that's good stuff right there. But I think we are just about finished in this area of the hub. I cannot wait to tackle that tower, because that is just one of the best places in the game. But, to hold you in suspense, we are going to do another sigil puzzle, and I already I've forgotten how to do this one. Um, so we might be here for a while, but just just bear with me. And we'll get through it eventually. As I've stated before, a lot of your puzzles are gonna end up looking like this. It's gonna be a bit of a mess. These things will take a lot of time. But in the end, it'll be worth it, I feel. Because in the end, we did solve it in almost no time at all. So there's pretty much no reason to complain. Now we're gonna don't now we're gonna go down negative one floor. Oh for pity's sake! Egypt again? I friggin hate this place. Come on, Crow Team. How about a little originality? How many times have we done ancient Egypt now? Nothing but dusty old tombs and sand. He hates sand. It's coarse. It gets everywhere, especially his red sneakers. This is the Egyptian hub world, and I'm pretty sure a lot of these assets are just transferred from Sirius Sam 3 BFE. I think there might be a few different things here, but I'm not gonna go looking at every individual piece of geometry from the from Sirius Sam 3 compared to this game, but this area is pretty cool. It doesn't have any easter eggs in the hub, unfortunately, but it introduces a couple of new items. This is a fan, for instance, and over here would be a um, copying machine thingy. I'm not entirely sure what this thing is called. But anyway, we don't have enough sigils for either of these, so obviously we are going to have to get a jump start on some of these worlds. Which I'm not going to do in this video, but it's worth showing off. Uh, once again, there are seven main worlds, there's a star world, and one boarded up area, which you will see in a while. Not right now, just in a while. It will take some time before we have a chance to actually show those areas off, unfortunately. And this, as for the Star Worlds, I think I might be tackling those last as well. So we're just going to go out of our way to collect as many stars as possible first. But those are all my plans explained, and thank you guys very much for watching. The next time we play, we will actually go ahead and start tackling the Egyptian realm, starting with World B1. Until then, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day or evening, and I guess I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.